Hey everyone, welcome to the UVD Weekly Wrap-Up, the show where the team from UrbanVinylDaily.com goes over everything there is to know in the designer toy, art, safubi, and street art world. I am your host, Travis Likens, and my normal co-host, Ben, is not available. So, we have a very, very special guest that will be joining us via the call-in section of our phone, which or of our show, which is a totally new feature. So, uh... Mr. Specialty Guest, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, my name's Justin Phillips, also known as Jay Fury. Um, you may know me from customizing vinyl and resins and a little bit of canvas work here and there. I've been in the art, the vinyl art scene for going on, I think we're getting ready to hit six years pretty soon here, about five years now. Yeah. About the same amount of time as a uh, UVD. You got you started roughly right around the same time as us. So I'm yeah, excited. I think it was like two months after you guys. I jumped yeah. in. So uh, we've kind of been together from nearly the beginning. We started covering you kind of early on, and um, oh yeah, you guys were one of the first ones to actually give me some coverage, and I believe you guys were the first people to give me a spot in a show. Well, there you go. You heard it first, right here. <laughs> And that was, uh, let's see, that was probably They Came From The Streets 2. That was the show that you Yes, it was. The first one we had. And um, we've done many projects with you since then, including custom series, uh, uh, the old Sculpt and Swap series that we used to roll, uh, where we had artists create a dunny and then switch with another artist and paint the sculpt that they created, um, you know, before that. So we've done a lot of stuff with Jay Fury, including having booths at designer con and, uh, you know, doing some all kinds of projects with him. So it was great to have him as our first guest call in artist on the show. Um, since this is episode four, you know, it's kind of early on in our thing, but we wanted to, uh, you know, bring it on, kind of start something new and see where this goes. So happy that you joined us, Justin. Glad to be here. Okay, so we're going to roll right on into toy news, guys. And the first bit of news that we do have for this week is that Kid Robot has announced that uh, they will be offering pre-orders for uh, many of their San Diego Comic-Con exclusive items. Um, They're taking kind of a note from a lot of uh, other companies that have kind of started doing this as of, you know, the past five years or so. And uh, letting fans go ahead and pre-order. So when they go to San Diego Comic-Con, they don't have to worry about... uh, you know, having to fight or knock people out or whatever has to happen at San Diego Comic-Con in order to get an exclusive. Um, Just some of the ones we wanted to point out was that they have released uh, the Adventure Time, the Lick, Lick, I'm saying that wrong, but that is a eight inch limited to 200 pieces and it'll be a hundred dollars. The Simpsons Kaiju Mr. Sparkle, one of the famous episodes of the show. Um, It'll have the seven inch and it is uh, limited to 500 pieces and it's $50. Um, they, my personal favorite from the group, and I don't know how Justin feels, but it was the, uh, Jason Freeney, uh, glow in the dark anatomical rabbit, 12 inch, um, figure that is limited to 500 pieces and will be $65 each. And it's actually a Jason Freeney piece that, um, he took Bugs Bunny and did his anacom, anacom, eh, anatomical or dissected, however you want to call it, uh, view of the character. I think it's pretty cool. What, what do you think of these releases, Justin? Yeah, I agree with you. That That's my favorite one. Uh, that one I might actually have to try and get my hands on. Yeah, and uh, it's six, 65 bucks. Not bad either. Yeah, 12 inches. That, that's that's a good size figure for that price. Do you know if the the clear, what what is it, the Adventure Time? Yeah. Is that a different type of plastic or is that clear vinyl? Uh, they actually didn't show in the press release if it was vinyl or not. Um, I, I'm kind of interested to see if the Mr. Sparkle is actually like soft vinyl since they advertise it as Kaiju, even though that's not yeah. generally the, you know, it would be Safubi. Um, but I, I don't know. So I'm kind of interested. Maybe they're playing with some different materials from Kid Robot. It's kind of one of those things that you probably won't know unless you pick it up or get to see one in person somewhere. Um, yeah. I'm also kind of interested to see if this is the only releases they're going to have um, because they did have a few other that from the uh, street fighter, mega man and TMNT. Um, I kind of wonder if they're just pre-ordering the licensed product that they have. Um, yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm hoping they actually do 
some sort of dunny release or something to yeah. surprise us with that. Or like um even if they took like an art toy that they have, like the um you know, the um General So's Nightmare or something and had like a special colorway of that. Something that's more art toy driven would be kind of cool to y- see. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, those are the ones that get my interest a little bit more. Yep. So um, that's kind of all we have on that. Um, if you want to pick up something for the um, pre-order, you do have to be in person to pick it up. This is not a pre-order it and they ship it to your house type situation. Um, but if you want to do that, make sure to head over to uh, kidrobot.com and there's all the details over there on how to pre-order these items. So if they're in, if these are things you're into, grab them. Um, the next thing is actually something that you can grab from your house, really. <laughs> so uh, our friend Kyle Kerwin has announced that the next colorway of the Blooms figure will be available uh, June 15th. So uh, this is a resin figure that is a companion to his famous Willow resins that were funded on Kickstarter a couple of years back. And they, they stand about six inches tall and are limited to 10 pieces at um, 50, $50 a piece. So um, not really a, a bad price. Specifically, if you have the pink version of Willow, this will look great as a uh, collectible piece there. What do you think, Justin? Yeah, no, I really like this one. Uh, I mean, I... Didn't get my hands on one of the willows before, but I think I might go ahead and get me one of the blooms. The I just I like the texture that he sculpted on the top of them. Yeah, I, no. I don't know if if that's flower. I, I mean, it, or if it's supposed to be like a little clump of pollen is what the bloom is or what. But yeah. I really like the texture on the top. Yeah, I kind of took away like a similar thought to you is maybe it's like a pollen or you know just some sort of like. Um, Almost like a one of those little things you blow them and all the little things fly off like a marigold turns into it. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. things my kids blow all yeah, in my yeah, car all the time. Like something kind of like that. There you go. <laughs> but um, it's a really cool figure. And I mean, if you even if you don't have the willow, like it's still just a cool piece. So um, these are, you know, pretty limited at 10 pieces. So I, I suspect those will sell out pretty quickly. Um, but Yes, you know, at that price point for sure. Yeah, and uh, another funny thing is if you don't know Kyle and his uh, – um, girlfriend Sarah, they actually travel across the country in their RV and they create their art in there. And um, this release is actually on the one year anniversary of when they launched their their trip last year. So that's kind of cool as well. And um, so, oh, go ahead. So they pour all the resin in the RV. Yeah, they. I actually. Okay, here's another behind the scenes. They stopped by in Dayton. Um, and we went to, um, a a brewery called Warped Wing. Yeah. We're hoping we get a sponsor there, but probably not. Um, and, um, they took us in the RV and they got, they showed us how they kind of like work their process. Um, he does most of his casting, uh, you know, like they pull over wherever they're staying and they work. And while they're doing it, they do a lot of it right there on the um, kitchen table on (laughs) in the RV. And, um, Sarah does her, she crafts and makes hats and scarves and things like that as well. So she does that while Kyle's working. And uh, he has like an army or when he was here, he had like an army of willows hanging out on top of the um, it has like a a bed over top of the, um, you know, the seats in the RV had like an army of them. He was working on kind of hanging out there. So kind of a cool process to see and check out. That's great. Yeah. So, um, you know, make sure to head over to um, his web store. We'll have a link down in the show notes because I don't have it here on my paper. But make sure to uh, follow him on um, Instagram as well. I'm sure he'll have more details about future versions of the of the Bloom and potentially Willow maybe. I don't know if it's been retired or not, but we'll see. So uh, next little piece of news we've got is actually from Hucky. He has a new Lapin Norar La Flame figure. Um, probably butchered all of that, but uh, I tried my best to say it with a little bit of an accent. Um, it's about a nine and a half inch tall <laughs> resin figure and it's a uh, limited to 10 pieces and it's going back to more of his, um, you know, highly high end art collectibles at 850 bucks. So it's a, it's a pretty hefty piece, but people for the collect Huck should be used to that. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the amount of accessories and things included with this figure. Um, and the paintwork as always is pretty awesome. So, um, it, some of his other releases he does where they're cheaper, you know, he has a lot higher um, run numbers. So it's pretty cool to see him go back down to the the 10 level. That's, that's, you know, old school Huck, Hucky right there. So, yeah, 
the little welder's mask or whatever that is, it's killer on this one. Yeah, I, I just really think he did a, a knockout job. And I like that it's like, it's different from the blank as well. So it's not like the, you know, we've seen a lot of the blank lately. So it's kind of cool to see a different character as well. Yeah. And it's like you said, the accessories that are coming with this one, I mean, you're, you're getting a lot for a single custom. I mean, there's a lot of pieces that went into this one. Yeah. And if you're, um, you know, if you're a fan of his figures and whatnot, this is like, you know, it's cool to get back to the really low number pieces from Huck. Um, you just got to have the bank account to afford it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So um, if you're actually interested in picking one of these up, I don't know if any are currently still available because, um, you know, these do go fairly fast, but he does have from time to time people drop off. So if you are interested in picking up one, make sure to contact him at sales at huckgee.com and uh, tell him that you're interested and he'll let you know if either he's sold out or if there's a waiting list for those. So. Um, another cool custom item that's coming out in the next coming probably months, I'm assuming around 4th of July, when you say Justin? Yeah. <laughs> so it is, uh, from the customizer, Josh Mayhem and his, uh, blown away Dunny series will be getting a save America edition. Um, if you haven't seen the blown away Dunnies, he does an awesome job of creating these. They almost look like glass when he gets done with them. Don't they, Justin? Yeah, no, they're great in the process. You know, he's shown some glimpse on his Instagram of the process. I mean, it, it, all the layers that he puts on there to get that look. I mean, it's got to take some time for each layer to cure and all that. I mean, I, I love the concept. The biggest thing I like about it is it's so different from what he used to do all the time. You know, he used to do all those little mech type things. Yeah. And, I mean, this thing is it's just one of those ideas. You look at it and you're like, Oh, I wish I could have thought of that one. <laughs> I feel like, uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of work goes into making those though. Like with all the work. Oh yeah. Do, I mean, all the layers he's got to put on that. So like you, you're, when you get one of these pieces, you know that he's put a lot of time and effort into those. But, oh, oh yeah. Because I mean, even fast, the fastest here in resin out there, you're still looking at, you know, around 10 minutes per layer yep. and i'm pretty sure the type he's using the is that crystal clear stuff and that takes a while that yeah. takes a while yeah definitely and uh for this particular uh colorway they're actually going to be in red white and blue which uh is kind of funny because justin and i talked about it with him at uh designer con actually about doing a red white and blue themed uh blown away series so it's kind of cool to see that come full circle as well would you agree justin yeah it, I, when i saw it on instagram it, it, it yeah, it reminded me of our little conversation. Yeah, it reminded I me it was of us. Great that, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was great that he's actually going through with it. Yeah, it just reminded me of like being in that little circle near our booth and like, hey, this would be a good idea. <laughs> like, so, yeah, um, no, uh, and it, it works real well too. I, I like seeing the clear with the, the red and the blue layered underneath it. It's great. Yep. So um, make sure to keep an eye on uh, Kid Robot's uh, Instagram and uh, J uh, Josh Mayhem's as well, because, again, they haven't released a final release date. We'll try to let you know either here or on the blog once we have more firm details. Um, I, I guess that kind of wraps up toy news. So we'll kind of roll into the, to the art side of things. Um, we got a teaser, um, a little video that uh, JC Rivera and Gallery F posted of a new print collab that they're going to be releasing. Um, as a longtime supporter of the uh, Bear Champ and a longtime eater of pizza, I was very, very excited about this piece when he first revealed it back probably a couple of months ago. And I'm more excited that it is now available as a print. So it's uh, our friend, the Bear Champ, mowing down on some pizza. <laughs> Perfect, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, print, prints are great for people like me with very shallow pockets. And it looks like it's a pretty good size print as well. Um, just from the video, obviously you can't really tell, but we're hoping there's some more details coming soon. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to get it through galleryf.com, which is uh, the store. And if you happen to be in Chicago, it's a great place to check out. We've had a show there. Justin has shown there. Um, they just always have cool things going on, especially, um, you know, supporting local Chicago artists as well. So it's a cool place, cool place. Um, and finally, we have... Um, a bit of news about some events. Um, those folks going to Denver Comic Con. There's an exciting event happening with the folks from Sal. I can't say this right. 
Sally Centigrade, I believe that is how you say it. Um, their show is called Outer Limits, and it will feature the artwork of Brant Peters and Kathy Olivas. Uh, it's opening on June 16th, right after Comic-Con, and it'll take place from 5 to 9 p.m. Uh, they haven't released a lot of information, but those shows um, involving those two is always going to be good. Um, I don't know how Justin feels about their artwork, but I love staring at it. So um, what do you think about it, Justin? Oh, no, I love anything they do. I mean... I really hope someday to get out to one of those strange factory shows. I mean, it's just a little far for me to travel, but I mean, their stuff's always great. I love see it running into their booth when I'm at Decon. I mean, their, their stuff, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything from either one of them that I did not like. Yeah, and it's always cool like to see it how it all kind of melds together. And when they put their work alongside each other, it even kind of works together, even though it's two separate, you know, artists creating. And it, and that's always cool to see as well when they combined everything like that. Yeah, I, I always like seeing occasionally they do like collaboration paintings and stuff. I, I love seeing that because their work does mesh very well together. Yep, yep, definitely. And if you happen to be uh, out at Denver for the Comic Con or just happen to be in Denver. Uh, it'd be a great way to check out their work all in one location. So make sure to stop in and check it out. Okay. And um, I guess now we're, we're going to do a little something a little different for the, um, the UVD weekly wrap up, but we're just going to, since we have Justin here, we're going to pick his brain about things from the toy world and the toy scene. Um, so what have you been up to Justin? <laughs> That's the first question. <laughs> Well, lately I've been running around just being a dad. Um, the kids all end of school pretty much swamped me running around to different performances and all that fun stuff. But I haven't been com completely stagnant. I've been working on some sculpts, planning on doing a couple releases. Hopefully the first one will be in about two weeks. I don't know if you remember the character I did a long time ago. It, well, long time ago. I think it was two years now. Um, the Dunny with the... I, the popsicles melting on its head? Yes, yes. I uh, believe uh, you had one of those in a custom series we had. A three-inch. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That, the <laughs> original was for the custom series with yep. you guys. Yep. Um, and so what I'm doing is kind of a 2.0 version, if you will, of I want to do a little three-inch Dunny series release based on that character. I got the sculpt about halfway there, um, trying to get it exactly how I want it. And then from there, we'll I'll hopefully get the series up and running. And I'm hoping two weeks from now, I will put it out there and it's going to be a little lower cost. Um, you know, about probably 65, maybe $70 each. So it shouldn't be too pricey. Um, and then from there, I've honestly just been trying to catch up on commission so I can get all prepared and start working with other new series of, things i want to get back into releasing resin figures again you know i always like working with my own characters and my own making my own platforms basically so the the big goal is to finish up these few commissions that i have left and get on to a lot more resin runs yeah and um it's always cool to see um your work transition a lot of times we see it go from sketch to sculpt to resin and that's always a really cool transition to see as well yeah, it's fun. It's, you know, that's how a lot of my ideas, at least in the last couple of years, have come about is me sitting around drinking coffee in the morning or waiting on something to do with my kids. And I tend to have a little sketchbook with me or in my car and start doodling around. And next thing I know, I come up with a character I like and I try and run with it. You know, um, a lot of my little characters, I I try and grow them. You know, the first release you may see of them or the first sketch or whatever generally isn't how they end up looking, you know, a year from now, yep. but I, I try and grow them and perfect them, get them into a, a look that's appealing to myself. And then also, you know, people that like my work. Yeah. And um, so other than that, uh, what, what's your thoughts on the toy scene right now? I mean, kid robots kind of having a bit of a resurgence. Um, we were kind of in like a lull of the toy world, but it seems like there's a lot of cool, um, newer stuff, but independent stuff coming out as well. Um, what do you, what are your thoughts on that actually? Yeah, honestly, I think when all the crazy stuff went on with kid robot and all that, I think it kind of not scared people, but made them realize, okay, that 
that original goal of someday I'm going to get produced by Kid Robot kind of – they saw it vanish before their eyes. They thought it was going to disappear. Yeah. So then they everyone jumped on, okay, I got to figure – if I'm going to continue doing this, I got to figure out a way to do it for myself. Yeah. And it, it seems like a lot of people have really gone that route, and they're doing really well at it. Yeah. I mean I'm seeing – I mean, a few years ago when everyone got into, not everyone, I mean, there was a big explosion there, of people there was the doing surge, resin. Yeah. The surge of resin where you kind of got like the varying quality, you know? <laughs> like, Yeah, it, exactly. You could go from one person who, I mean, it, you could tell they were just figuring it out to another person that, I mean, is production quality, yep. all within the same few feet of each other at decon and they're know? like five um, five dollars apart <laughs> like, yeah it, it, exactly <laughs> you know and i think i think it's kind of i think everyone's starting to see that and it's actually making people step up their game a little yeah. bit they're looking for cleaner product you know when they're done but i mean yeah. i i actually enjoy it I, I mean i love production stuff don't get me wrong you know i i like seeing the stuff that comes out with kid robot i think they're doing a Pretty good job right now. I mean, I, I enjoyed seeing a lot of the stuff that's come out recently. You know, the quality looks good. But the someone at home in their garage or, like you said a little while ago, in their RV yep. producing their their own stuff, I, I enjoy that much more just because I know what went into it. You know, I know yep. they're sitting there hunched over a desk you know, working, working their fingers off. Yeah. Trying to, trying to paint straight lines on a curved surface. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or those hours of mindless sanding that that's, that's the worst part of it all. They're just sanding forever. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy seeing everyone, you know, kind of getting into doing it for themselves. I think it's putting more pride into everyone's work and everyone's, you know, really going for it right now. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's like, people are not only um, like people used to kind of like focus on how am I going to get a toy? And now I think people are focusing on how can I make a production quality resin? Kind of like what you were saying earlier with the transition, but like things are getting more artistic in some ways that way um, where it's less toy, you know? Exactly. To me, it is leaning much more over to the art side of it and less side of the toy, you know, yep, it's, it's much more of someone just reproducing a sculpture they made yep. than trying to make a toy. Yep, definitely. And I think it's changing things in the view of, um, you know, of production as well, because like um, pulling it back into a UVD toy type discussion. But when we were looking at doing Luna at first, I was worried about having no articulation on this figure um, because like to me, part of being a toy is it, it has to have some articulation, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. 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 So, um, I was a little worried about that at first, but I talked with a few people and everybody kind of said, you know, people are kind of used to static things now. It's not as big a deal as it was say like five years ago for it to have to have articulation. So it, it's kind of changing things even on the production side a little bit, I think. Yeah. I think people are really starting to view this stuff, even though, you know, it can be a cute, fluffy little forest creature with antlers they're still starting to view it more as an art sculpture and less a toy. Yeah. So um, as far as your, your own work again, uh, you were recently in the baby fats show up at Roto Fuji, right? Yeah. Um, that was a fun one. Um, uh, for those who don't know, uh, big C he um, sculpted it and got this little dinosaur dragon type creature that he came up with. Um, got it produced in resin and a bunch of different clear colors that yep. different places are getting, um, you know, exclusives. exclusives of. Yeah, thank you. And um, he also produced a bunch of blanks and he handed them out to artists. He was handing them out at Decon this last year. He was mailing them off to people overseas. And we had, he put on the show at Roto Fugi, um Gosh, it was just last month, I believe. Yeah, I think it's still um, on display, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I yes, <laughs> I, I believe you're correct. It is still on display out there. Yep. And the other news is is that July 30th, I believe, is the date. I could be off on the date, but I know it's the end of July. Um, he's actually doing a second show of the Baby Fats, but this one will be on the West Coast 
at it's Woot Bear a, Gallery. Woot Bear, yes, it's at Woot Bear. I, yeah. did, I did hear some inklings about that. I don't know if he's revealed it, but yes, I have heard about it. Um, well, I just revealed it. Yeah, we just revealed it. Exclusive news here at, uh, <laughs> at the UVD Weekly Wrap Up. Um, but yeah, no, like that it was a pretty cool little show. Um, thinking about it, they do have a show that opens up, I believe, this week. So to, that show probably will come down this week. Um, yeah. Yeah, because Norfin is going to take over that side of the gallery from what I believe. Um, which, yeah, it, it was fun to see what everyone did with it, you know, because I, I chat with Big C quite often. So I, I saw his baby fat when it was still very much a rough, you know, just shape yep. and saw what he did with it. And then to see other people take it. I mean, that's got to be fun on his side of things to watch other artists take yep. his creation and take their own interpretation of it yeah and from uh from just glancing through the uh, preview list the other day i believe they sold a pretty good amount of them too so um hopefully people are really digging the character because it looks you can tell it's a labor of love and um you know he had it was mana that produced that figure so it's got to be good quality resin you know they don't do anything weak so oh yeah the the clear ones are beautiful yeah. um and i believe the ones he did with rotofugi the exclusive i believe those sold out well then that's good news too because uh, it's always good to hear about a sellout in our scene, definitely. <laughs> oh, yeah. So um, as far as uh, later in the year, uh, w we were talking uh, slightly before this about DesignerCon, before when we were just chatting. Um, I understand you have a booth, right? Yes, uh, I will have my own booth this year. Um, hoping to have a few good releases, new stuff out. Um, again, my goal is probably by Decon, I should be well into the process of it's going to be a lot of original characters i mean i'm still going to do some customs for the booth but i definitely want to fill it with a lot of original resin sculpts and things along those lines yeah and yeah you're one of the lucky people that has a booth and aren't on the waiting list so you're ahead of a lot of people already <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i've paid that paid my booth fee i think i think it had opened for 15 minutes by the time i paid it i, I was on it this yeah year. I heard, I heard they sold out in four days. Like they were, they were sold out, sold out in four days. So that's, yeah, that, that's pretty that's, insane for designer con. I remember oh yeah, that, three, I mean, three years ago getting my booth in like July. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's how it was. I mean, it's just really blowing up. I mean, it, there's no telling how big it's going to be in two years. If everything keeps rolling, I mean, they, they may have to move to a different area. Yeah. yeah. And the cool thing about it is even though they're growing and growing, I don't, I don't feel like when I walk around, I see people that don't belong there. So it's not like, you know, um, some, you know, McDonald's has got a booth. I don't know. Like some random company like that's got a booth there that doesn't really belong there. It's all people creating and companies that, you know, help other artists create things for the most part. So kind of cool. Yeah. I, I really, I, I mean, I just really like the vibe there. I mean, everyone's real nice open. I mean, Yep. I, I I meet new artists every year that I'm there. I mean, this last year, the booth that we split, the uh, his name's Omar, I believe was his name. The guy who painted the characters of the sports. Yeah, the guy that was right next icons. to us. Yeah, he had yeah. the had the Kobe piece that everybody was talking about when we were. Yeah, there. he. Yep. I mean, he was just a nice, down to earth guy, and I mean, he could paint like nobody's business, but he didn't have any ego, nothing. I mean. Yeah. I think that's my favorite part about it. Yep. Everybody's kind of on a level playing field, whether you're a humongous artist or little guy on the block, you've all got an eight, you know, unless you get a double booth, you've all got a, a 10 foot booth and you've all got the same amount of space. And it really, um, you know, we've kind of looked, looked in the past and we're like, are you in a bad row? Or, and you, and no, like they're all of the same. Everybody kind of just wanders down back and forth, you know? So, um, it's just, who's looking for your stuff today. You know, that's kind of where it's at. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's every day though in this in the art scene. Yep. Did Did you make something that people like this yep. time? Yeah. <laughs> if not, then you've got a lot of stuff to take home. I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of paperweights. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, let's see. So, other than that, are you in? Um, are there any other shows that you guys you can talk about coming up later in the year? Um, the only show that. I'm in, in the near future is the second baby fat show. Um, I will be, I will have a piece in that. I'm doing a second rendition of the baby fat. Um, I, my goal is to actually be out there though. So if you're going to go out there, um, 
good chances are you're going to run into me. I, I want to be out there for the opening of that show to support Big, Big C and, um, you know, just check it out and hang out with people. Other than that, I've really been trying to slow down on the shows and stuff. Like I said, I, I want to get the commissions all finished up and move on to just r- really focusing in on character development and getting yeah. some stuff into resin. Yeah, that's the, uh, I think character development is a very cool, um, you know, very cool way. And it's a good way to take that next step as well, because once people see those original characters on original type platforms, then, um, then you're really taking your art and selling your art at that point. You, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah. are, are there people buying your yeah. stuff because you did a dunny or are they buying your stuff because they really like it? type thing you know oh yeah exactly i mean you and i have talked about that before past times where we've met up and stuff but i mean there to me there's nothing better than it's if you did it from very beginning all the way to the end you know from scratch to finish and people are buying it that that that's great i mean it it feels good i don't care if you're selling something for five dollars or you're selling something for you know eight hundred dollars it, it feels good that you made something that someone actually wants to take up some space in their house with, yep. especially in this scene. I mean, everyone's, you know, shelves are full most days. So yep. yeah. you, you getting a spot on that shelf, it, it feels good. Yeah. It definitely means something these days is more and more of the larger, you know, custom and resin collectors from, you know, three or four years ago, we constantly run into more and more people are filling, filling shelves. So um, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a definite honor to get your stuff put on a shelf and um, whether it's production, resin, customs, anything at this point, you know, uh, cause people are, yeah. the, there's a lot of people to a lot, the point of closets full of boxes, you know, and um, rota- yeah. rotating things out and things like that. So anytime you're getting some space, it's always a good, good feeling, you know? Yeah, for sure. So um, as far as um, let's see here. I I think I think that's a pretty good discussion. What do you think, Justin? Anything else you want to add to the overall J Fury section of the show? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I mean, just keep an eye out. Um, hopefully, I'll be releasing some info on some releases in the future. Um, got any questions? You you know want to talk to me about something? You know, I'll, I always try to respond to people pretty quickly. So feel free to contact me email or through Instagram or Facebook, any of those places you, uh, I'm pretty good at responding to people. Yeah. And if you want to check him out on Instagram, he is at J Fury one. So that's where you can find his, uh, daily antics and other things that he's, uh, possibly working on or some of these characters that he's talking about developing. So, um, that's where you can find that. Um, you can also check him out on, um, furious custom with an S right, Justin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Furious Fur- customs dot big cartel.com. Yep. So you can also check us out, check his store out there for any of the up to date releases that he's going to have and things like that. So make sure to keep your eye on Jay Fury. Cause you heard it here first. He's got some big stuff coming later this year. So now he's just got to follow through. Cause we said it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got to, got to keep up with it. Got to lock the kids out the house so I can get some work done. <laughs> So um, the, the final piece of the UVD weekly wrap up actually involves our friend that's on the phone. So this kind of works out well as well, um, is that we actually do have um, an update on Luna. Um, if you back the Luna Kickstarter and you backed at a lower level. So when I say lower, I mean anything that didn't have a figure um, or a custom involved in it. So you have the t-shirts, buttons, uh, the prints or the you know button print and... Um, button print and t-shirt three pack there. Those have all been shipped and delivered. So we have progress in the Kickstarter realm. Um, Also, if you ordered one of the eight inch Dunny customs, those are complete and have been shipped as well. So um, I forgot to send Justin a picture so he could check it out, but they turned out amazing. Um, and I'm showing yeah, you, you, I'm showing it right now on the screen. So, uh, if you, if you watch this later, Justin, you can see a picture of it. I'm going to have to wait. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so they, they turned out great. And, um, if you backed the figure and you received, you know, you backed it at a figure level or a level where like Justin is creating a custom version of Luna. Um, we're still marching towards that. The factory is still working on the molds. Um, we have not got a, a picture of the molds or the test pool yet, but we are assured that they are moving right along. So 
hopefully in the next week or so. I mean, it's it's kind of you're kind of playing the waiting game at this point with the factory, but they're moving right along just as they they said they were. So I'm excited to see what Justin does with the Luna, um, and the lo- one lucky fan that's going to get it. I'm kind of jealous. Uh, I I can't wait to have that thing in hand. I mean, they they just look so cool. Yeah, and uh, Justin's uh, one of the lucky people that got to see the prototype in person and um, actually made a critique that we did incorporate. So the the antlers were corrected before the final prototype was uh, painted and shown in the Kickstarter. So there you go, Justin. Yeah, no. You had input. Oh, uh, <laughs> All right, I, I contributed. Yeah, I'm going to put you in the thank yous on the bottom of the uh, the box there. <laughs> I'm at the ending credits, right? You know. Yeah. Um, no, but it was a great figure, and I mean, I, I, I'm i so glad it got funded. I can't wait to see the thing in person, because just the prototype, I mean, we stared at that all day that day that it got dropped off. Yeah, I, I got to say, I was super, like, just felt happy all day, you know, just like sitting there looking yeah. at it. I was just like, oh, this is awesome. I, re- I remember saying, I think this is the one thing we've done right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. I remember that. <laughs> so, um, but... If you uh, back the Kickstarter, as always on the show, we want to say thank you. Um, but if you want to keep up with the latest on the show or Luna or the blog, make sure to check out UrbanVinylDaily.com. Uh, you can always check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Urban Vinyl Daily. Um, if you want to send us an email, like say, hey, you want to say we suck, you want to see somebody on this show, uh, you want to see us review something, talk about something, or wear one of your t-shirts, let us know at UrbanVinylDaily at gmail.com. Um, but let's say you like the nerdier side of things. You can check me out on my other podcast, which is Token Nerd Podcast. You can find us at pod, oh, sorry, tokennerdpodcast.podbean.com or on iTunes or Stitcher by searching Token Nerd Podcast. Um, you can always follow us on Instagram as well at token underscore nerd. But before the show is over, we do want to say our thank yous to our special guest host, Mr. J Fury. Uh, thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah, and um, hopefully we can either have you out again or have you involved in a project before, um, I guess, well, we'll, we probably won't have a project before November because Luna's going to keep us busy, but uh, we will see oh, you, yeah. We will see you at DesignerCon and uh, make sure to stop by his booth and we'll make sure to let you guys know what his number is when it's once it is revealed. Thank you. Okay, and uh, make sure to check us out next week on the UBD Weekly Wrap-Up. Until then, have a great designer toy day.